Hello, and welcome to part two of chapter three. Let's get right into it. So here's the third illustrated example, where we have n equals 25, and here's our data set. As you can see, it's already been ordered for us. Um, we have our low being 14, our high being 38. So for our regular stem plot, how we looked at it, um, as you can see, when we put everything in here, it's very squished. Um, you can see our sil our silhouette is it's very squished. It's 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 not a great way to see the shape. Um, what we want to do is we might want to split it up, and this would be called a split stem. So uh, we put the first ones on the split stems holds the leave values between zero to four, and the second one holds the leaves values between five and nine, and so on. So when you get to two, the first one you'll see holds between zero and four, two, four, and then the second two value will have between five and nine, and this helps spread out the data. It's like I said, I call it a split stem, uh, split stem stem plot, tongue twister there. So as you can see, you have the first uh, value here, um, and this should actually be multiplied times 10, right? Because uh, we're count this as a, a point value. So one uh, dash four uh, multiplied by 10 would be a 14. Uh, but when we split the sum up, you can see it from this would be from 0 to 4, and then from 5 to 9 on this value, and then 0 to 4, and then 5 to 9 on this value, 0 to 4, 5 to 9 on this value. So you can see once you split it up, you actually kind of get a better representation um, of the data when it comes to the shape of it. Uh, as you can see now, it has a, a negative skew, uh, and it's a lot easier to see as opposed to when it's all very squished. So how many stem values should you have? And the correct answer is, I don't know. It depends on the data set. There's not a uh, one all be all method. So it might take sometimes uh, trial and error to figure it out. Uh, you might not have to try different stem multipliers or uh, splitting them into uh, more plots. So here's an example from the book in table point uh, 3.3 has to do with body weight in pounds of students in a class of a size of 53, n equals 53. So as you can see, this would be more accurate to what data would look like if you actually got it. Um, it's not in order. Um, it's organized by columns and rows here, but as you can see, there's, it's, not low, uh, it's not from low to high. Uh, we want to look at this data. So you can see it's ranged from 100 to 100, uh, 260 pounds, um, axis multiplier of uh, 100, only two stem values of uh, 100 and 200. It, it's too broad, right? If we if we only have uh, one and 200, um, it's going to be too squished in the value size. Uh, so we're gonna have to split it up. Uh, maybe have four stems uh, or more, uh, and do an axis multiplier times 10. So as we can see here, we divide it up even more. Um, here's our uh, stem and leaves for this and as you can see we we divided it up uh, by tens with an axis multiplier of 10 to get uh, a better representation of the value here uh, as you can see if you were to kind of draw this right um, silhouette shape it's that's kind of our shape as I said, once again i'm not a drawer uh, it's not symmetrical uh, by any means you can see it kind of has more of a, a positive skew to it um, potential outlier of 260 over here. As you can see, it's kind of a lot further away from the data set. Um, the median would be uh, around 165, which is underlined right here. And the spread, once, a quarter, once again, is from the lowest value, 100 to 260. We can divide it up even more into quintuplet split stem values. Uh, this gets a little bit uh, crazier in, in, in how they divide it up, right? Um, so in this one, you have your asterisk, your T, F, S, dot. And each one of these uh, has two spots for the leaves. So the asterisk contains the leaves of zero to one, the T for twos and threes, the S for fours and fives, S for six and sevens, and then the dot for eight and nine. So as you can see, here's an example where this comes into play and how it would look. In SPSS, like I said, um, I will, there's plenty of examples in the book of SPSS output. Um, here's one for a stem plot. It provides the frequency counts uh, with its stem plots. And we're gonna go into frequency right after this. So here's your stem and leaf, and here's your dot, or we can have your line. And you can see here's your silhouette shape, and you can tell a lot from this uh, information. 
on the left hand side here you can see the frequency so it tells you how many times it popped up so a frequency of two would show uh, that the, this came up uh, two times uh, nine it came up nine times and so on and so forth because of a large n each leaf represents two observations in case you were kind of wondering uh, where this came from each leaf represents two observations so frequency table a frequency equals a count how many numbers are there a relative frequency equals the proportion or uh, percent of it a cumulative frequency is the percent less than or equal to a level or a certain value so as you can see uh, here we have age and we had a frequency of age of three twice the relative frequency would be how uh, what is the frequency of that to the total population or total number of people in the data set and then the cumulative frequency would be as this increases this will increase to um, a value of a hundred percent for the whole data set this when it's added together will equal 100 percent frequency tables with class intervals so when data uh, are, are sparse data groups in the class or intervals you want to create between 4 to 12 class intervals classes can be uniform or non-uniform right it depends on the shape endpoint uh, convention first class interval uh, of 0 to 10 will include 0 but exclude 10 and then you have tally frequencies calculate relative frequency to calculate cumulative frequency so now we're going to go into the class intervals and show you what this kind of looks like so here's a uniform class interval tables uh, with the width of 10 for data that we had earlier what we want to do is look at the uh, class age and at the class age between 0 and 9.99 and you can see there's a frequency of 1 we know this is right here right this value of 5 is between this class uh, interval and it popped up one time so the relative frequency is 1 out of the 10 so there's your 10 percent cumulative frequency at this point is 10 percent as well because it's just from 0 going up think of cumulative uh, frequency a great way to think about this is like your cumulative grade point average as you keep taking classes in uh, college you, all the classes are cumulative right your grade point average is cumulated over time you can look at it at a particular semester but overall the cumulative grade point average is the uh, from the very beginning to where you are presently so let's uh, go here to between uh, 20 and 29 for age we can see that this is going to be this part of the data set so there's going to be four right so our relative frequency or the frequency is going to be four because it comes up four times our relative frequency is going to be the number over the total number in the set, so it'll be 4 over 10, which is going to give you your 40% here. Cumulative frequency is going to be from the beginning to that point, total cumulative frequency. So it's going to be the relative frequency basically all added up into this area. So you can see 10 plus 10 plus 40 is going to give you your 60. Histogram. So here it would be a histogram uh, of the frequency start. Um, not much really to see there's you know not not a lot going on histogram or also known as a bar chart um, you can see how it all looks histogram let me correct this like a bar it's like a bar chart but histogram actually has the bars touching there is a bar chart the bars do not touch there's a gap that is the major difference uh, between them oh i don't know why it scrolled in Back out a uh, pie chart. So a pie chart for frequency data in the following table. So here we have uh, another uh, data set where we have age ranges of preschoolers, elementary, junior high, and seniors. The total number of preschoolers at this time was 11. The frequency of elementary school is 496, 147, and here's your total for it. The relative frequency is going to be the frequency over the total and that will give you relative frequency cumulative frequency once again is the is all of them added up from the beginning to the end if you want to look at the pie chart of this this is what a pie chart would look like for the display of that data once again this is um, just going over different types of charts frequency and stem plots stem plots being the one that we are going to focus on uh, the more from the previous video and the one that we'll be practicing more in class uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please feel free to reach out and ask me. Once again, there is 
online tutoring, tutoring at the uh, college, and if you uh, need any extra help, I am available um, for appointments or office hours uh, to help out. I will see you all in the uh, next video.